inside have lost my way Flame on, flame on Let the fire burn inside Let my heart be a sanctuary For your spirit to abide to my heart's desire It's your Holy Spirit all consuming fire You will hear me when I'm calling and you will never leave You will keep me from falling if I have faith to I'm
When Christ comes, heaven will be empty for a while. Not even angels up there when Christ comes on a chariot of fire in the sky. Take one more look if you dare when the mountains fall into the sea. Planet Earth, there's really no place to be. When Christ comes, as a king in royal garments white There will be no hiding place when Christ comes Many will be running from the light They cannot look at his face when the sky unfolds Just like a scroll He will come and rescue me and everyone will So don't go when they say he's in the desert or in an apparition on a wall. Don't go when they tell you come and see him in some secret place. Yes, he is coming the second time around and his feet won't touch the ground. When Christ comes. When Christ comes to redeem with his righteous right hand All who are willing to hear and obey his will They'll walk on Zion's hill And rise to meet him up in the air My friend, will you be there? So don't go when they say on a wall Don't go When they tell you Come and see him In some secret place Yes, he is coming The second time around And his feet won't touch the ground Don't you believe the lie He'll be seen Shut up. At last the time has come When I can pause to worship The Spirit, Father, Son And celebrate the birth Of earth and sky and sea time for me when heaven comes to earth Ooh, oh, at last the time is here the week is all 
my cares away and Jesus comes to be with me a sample of eternity oh, I can hardly wait to go where every day is like Sabbath but I'll wait because I know what life is really worth and when I see his face forever I'm gonna praise him for his goodness and his grace when heaven comes to The time has come, child of God, for you to close your eyes and sleep. To take your final breath and to be laid to rest in. Trust in him who has the
the power to save then we have the victory over death and the grave I'll show you a mystery we will not all sleep oh no for God And together we will go, together we will hear him say, well done. But first you will rise, and together we will meet him in the skies. Our joy will be complete when we cast all our crowns at Jesus. I wanted him right here with me 
was only a tree. Hello, happy Sabbath to all, and welcome again to the lesson number five for the after study. And we are blessed this Sabbath. Uh, we thank everybody for joining us. We are here with Pastor Harris from Mansfield Church. Happy Sabbath, Pastor. Hey, happy Sabbath. Okay, and thank you for joining us. And we also have our special guest, Dr. Santos from the Kinesiology Department from Southwestern at Venice University. Happy Sabbath, and thank you for being with us. No, happy Sabbath to you and to, um, to the pastor and his church, Mansfield, and it's an honor for me to be in your church this afternoon. Well, we're, we're blessed to have you. Thank you. So, so this week, um, the, we are going into le lesson five, and it's called the Spirit Empowered Witnessing. So before we start, we would like to invite everyone who, are wa who is watching to join us in a word of prayer so that we can invite the Holy Spirit and we all can be blessed. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this moment to open your word. Father, in this time more than ever, we need the Holy Spirit. So I pray that you can empower us, you can transform us as we open your word and that we can be blessed, and everyone who is joining can be blessed from this study. And may Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 So as we go into the lesson, the Spirit-empowered witnessing, as we start with a little introduction, we're going to start with the Bible verse. So if we can all turn to our Bibles, and let's go to Acts 4.31. Acts 4.31. And the Word of God reads, and when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. You know, this is, this is one of my favorite Bible verses when it talks about the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in the early church in Acts. And what's so beautiful about this is it just shows us how prayer ignites the Holy Spirit in our lives. So they came together, they prayed. And I love this lesson because if you look at lesson four, last week we, we spoke about the power of prayer and interceding for others. And then now it goes into what happens after we pray. The Holy Spirit empowers us. So if we, when we look into this lesson, it's just showing that prayer actually leads into the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And I did a little uh, research when I was doing my study, digging deep into what did, what did prayer mean? What is the root meaning of that word? And it goes into diomai. And this is the begging, the, the putting yourself in pos, uh, petition, to just the warning of the presence of God. Like there's a lack in our lives and realizing the lack thereof, because at this time, the disciples, uh, Jesus ascended, and they were left there to minister. And you see these feeble men, these finite men, thinking, how can we do this? He gave us the Great Commission, in Matthew 28, 19. And how are we going to be able to do this? So they, were, they knew that there was a lack. They, knew, they realized that they needed the power of God. But not only did they realize that they needed it, but they desired it. And it was kind of like a longing for them when they were in the upper room. So they went, they asked God, they begged God, and this is biblical because we see this, uh, we see this example where in Luke 5, we, we know about the, the man who had leprosy, 
he came to Jesus and he, he asked him, he besought him saying, if thou would make me clean. So, so it's so beautiful that we see right here in this scripture that prayer is what ignites the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and this is what we're going to be going through as we go over this lesson, just this spirit empowered witnessing. And in the notes, it makes it clear to us. It's when ordinary band of brothers serve an extraordinary, powerful God, and he fills them with his Holy Spirit to fulfill his mission. Because people may ask, what are, what are the blessings of being filled with the Holy Spirit? What are the blessings? How can I be blessed by being filled with the Holy Spirit? And when we're empowered with the Holy Spirit, it enables us as believers to share the message of the cross. And when, you, when we share that life-changing message, it has a world-changing power because the Holy Spirit, what it did to these believers is it made their witness effective because we can go out there and we could talk about the cross. We can talk about Jesus. We can say it's a life-changing message, but without that Holy Spirit dwelling within our lives, our witness cannot be effective. So that's the greatest blessing of being filled with the Holy Spirit. It actually makes all of our efforts effective. And we see the results of that. In a few, year, in a few short years, their witness impacted the whole entire world. So that, that's what I love about the introduction of this. It goes into... It goes into the fact that they prayed. It goes into the fact that they were assembled together and was, and then they witnessed the shaking. And then they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And then the, it says they spoke the word of God with boldness. Any thoughts, Pastor? Anything coming to you, Dr. Santos? Yes, for me, um, I, will, I, I love when they said, they turned the world upside down. You see? They, um, the Holy Spirit equals power. And if you're an instrument and you let the Lord, that's the expert, working with the instrument, it will give you power. And these people were, were humble people, right? They weren't doctors. They weren't big professionals, they just put their life in Jesus' hands. And they were able to turn the world upside down and to preach to every creature in this world. And that's a lot, you know. Today we have all the technology and we have uh, all the instruments and we have to say, are we doing the same? Are, are we capable? We are if we let the Holy Spirit work in our lives. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Um, a few things that come to mind as I, as I consider both of your thoughts and the thought uh, from the text. Um, I see where Jesus is saying, um, witnessing must include uh, a, a, a power from outside that will come on the inside. In other words, through witnessing, uh, he knew that it wouldn't be dependent upon our power, our intellect, you know, um, our abilities. And so he, first of all, let us know that when it comes to witnessing, when it comes to sharing our faith, um, that it's going to take a complete dependence upon the Holy Spirit, which will be provided to us. Um, that's one of the first things I, I, I see here. He sees a mission that cannot be done without an external power. I also notice here that it mentioned that they were together. In other words, powerful things take place when the people of God are together and together are being filled by the Holy Spirit. Supernatural things will take place when we're together on one accord with each other and with the Holy Spirit power. 
Amen. And Amen. That, that, that is so powerful. Uh, that is why, uh, it, it, you know, the, the work was able to be done in a wide uh, sense, a widespread sense, because it, were, it involved people who were living lives together with God and each other. And that combination is, is is a is a powerful thing, and so yeah, those two things I want to uh, I derive from this text: the idea of of our total dependency upon the external power of the Holy Spirit to come on the inside of each individual, and then the collective corporate ministry of the church um, uh, being filled by the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is effective witnessing. Amen. Amen. And 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 uh, one, of some, one of the most beautiful things about this is, as we transition into Sunday, there's a promise. Jesus gives us the promise of the Holy Spirit. And Pastor, I'm going to ask if you can go to John 15, 26, and 27. And the question okay. I'm asking is, what do these verses tell us about the Holy Spirit's role in witnessing? John 15, 26 and 27. Bible says, but when the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the, whole, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me, and you also will be a witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. And then uh, John 16, 8. John 16, 8. I'll help and read that one. John 16, 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So what do these verses tell us about the Holy Spirit's role in witnessing? Um, first of all, the, the text you mentioned there in John uh, 15, uh, the fact that he's an helper, he's an helper. Um, you know, we, we need help when it comes to witnessing. Um, uh, we have our own fear of sharing Christ. We, we have different inhibitions, um, um, you name it. Uh, we, we, we might sense our own inadequacies, uh, uh, could be inadequacies in our knowledge of the scripture. Uh, uh, and th there's so many things that, that, that can prevent a person uh, from exercising this amazing uh, 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 gift. Uh, um, and so um, what Jesus is saying is, I offer you help. In other words, you have access to help. Uh, and so I, I like that word there, the, the, the paraclete, so to speak, in the Greek, someone who is going to come beside the individual and, and help us. Uh, uh, in, in, in our knowledge of the word, help us in speaking the word and help us in developing relationship with other folk so that they can receive the word. And so I, I think that's very powerful because there, there, there are people who might sense that they, they don't know how to give a Bible study. Um, they have never reached out to anyone before when it comes to Christ. Uh, and Christ never meant this task to be done um, uh, alone. Um, he offers us help. Uh, he offers us the paraclete, the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dr. Santos, any thoughts? Yes, um, here is tremendous because Jesus says, I have to leave and I have to bring someone that's going to help us, right? And um, not only help us, but he's going to be in us. 
And he's going to help us make, um, give us power to be able to accomplish all the roles, to give testimony. All right. And that Holy Spirit, when I was reading Sunday, it says that it um, convinced me of sin. And I said, why have to, why do I have to see my sins? Because God is a God of love, right? And then I said, oh, he lets me know that I'm a sinner. And that automatically lets me know that I need help. Then I need God. Then I need a change in my life, right? So um, it's going to take me so I could be a rightness to the right person in the community and so I could glorify, glorify God, right? And um, with that, it's going to give me power so that with Jesus' spirit, with the Holy Spirit, I could go out and talk to others and present the word of God. Um, um, nowadays, um, sometimes we think that it's with our power, you know, that we could do things. But if God's not with us, we can't do anything. I remember a missionary, a missionary that went to Africa. And um, when he was there, uh, that night, they put all the woods and they did a big fire, right? And they did a service and it was tremendous. And I, and other tribe was motivated and everything. But the missionary went to sleep in the morning. He woke up a little bit later than them. And he saw all the wood together again. And he said, wow, you were able to put all the wood together. And uh, one of the tribes said, no, we didn't do that. It's the monkeys that early in the morning says they see what we do. They did it too. And then the, the man of the tribe said, you see, the monkeys could do what we do. But then the missionary said, well, the monkeys could put the wood together, but the monkeys don't have fire. We as Christians, we need to let the Holy Spirit work in our lives so we could have the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. Once God puts that in our lives, we will be able to get that promise of Jesus and go to preach to others and then know that we're sinners and that it's not with our strength. It's with the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You know, and and um, Dr. Santos, you're making a, a, a valid point when you say we need that fire. That transitions us into Monday, where it says an empowered church. So, uh, Dr. Santos, I'm going to ask you Acts 2 41, 41 42, and go with what impresses you most about the passage. What is the message that Luke, the author of Acts, desires to share by reporting such rapid growth in the church? Okay, great question. Let me read immediately only Acts. 241 42. So those who received the word were baptized and they were added that day about 3,000. Look at that. And one day, one day, 3,000. And they devoted themselves to the apostles, teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Only that, 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 those verses. On Monday, Act 2, 41, 42. Act 4, 44, 30, 31. All those verses talk to us about how these people were added to church. They talk about numbers. They're talking about 3,000 in one day, 5,000 in one day, multitude of people in one day, the church growing, preaching the word of God with power. We at the Seventh-day Adventist church, we have to know, number one, that still that power is in us. Amen? Amen. We know that, and I could ask Pastor Harris that he's the one that knows more on this. How many people 
get baptized in our church in a year? Hundreds of thousands, right? You the, you know global about? Church, the global church. Yes. Sure. Correct. How many brothers and sisters get baptized in a year? Do you know? Uh, you know, I don't know the exact figure, but but uh, I think you're, you're you're probably in the right range. Right. Yeah. And I know there are thousands. So right. if, uh, one time I added it, and if I added all this, there were more than a thousand daily. So just because where we are living around, we don't see thousand baptizing. Okay. That doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is not doing it around the world. Wow. It is. It is. There's numbers. And the thing is that here, <clears throat> the church is not only looking for numbers. Each number, and I want to bring this up, represents, each number represents a soul, a person. Each person is important for Jesus. I did a small research and impressive. In the war, World War I, 53,402 people, soldiers, American soldiers, died in World War I. Vietnam, 58,220 soldiers died in Vietnam. And in Korea, 36,574 soldiers died in, the, in those wars. Three big wars, okay? And still, and I hope brothers and sisters can listen to this. In the war of COVID-19, more people have died in four months than in World War I, Vietnam, and Korea. And they're not numbers. They're my brother. They're my mom. They're my, my student, my grandson. And, and that's how it's been doing. These are people that we feel for them. And they have died with this COVID. But bringing it to the church, in the early church, there were thousands, but not numbers. Not only numbers. Thousands of people that were able to turn their life to Jesus and to preach. Listen to this. And to be able to preach our mission, our Seventh-day Adventist mission that it says, make disciples of Jesus Christ who lives as his loving witness and proclaim to all people the evangelist gospel of the three angels message and preparing preparation for his soon return. Hey, these people had a mission. We have a mission today. These people accomplished their mission. They took the world, they took the world and they were able, they were able to, to turn it upside down. And they were able to preach to every creature. Today is our time. Our time to let the Holy Spirit work in us, empower us so that we could be witnessing and we could be taking this holy message to all those people, not numbers, people that are needed, that are needed for the Holy Spirit and that really needs God. I was touched by a testimony of of Pastor Finley, one of his guys that was canvassing. 
And he has said how God, the Holy Spirit, used them. Canvassing. So what are we doing to take the mission, the, the mission of the church with power to others? But before I let Pastor and Christopher talk, it must start inside of us. We have to let the Spirit, our body become temple of the Holy Spirit. We must go to God every day. And when we do that, a virus that dies with water and soap won't control us. The Holy Spirit, that's power, will control us. Amen. Amen. Good, good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Dr. Santos, as I reflect upon your words there, um, and I look at the, the, the topic of Monday's lesson, which is an empowered church. Um, one of the things that, 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 that really come to mind is the fact that church is not an event. Right. I, mean, I mean, in our culture today, uh, church is all about an event. You go to church once a week, and then you go home. Yeah. And then you come back the next week, you do the same thing again, and nothing really happens between much of, much of the folks who go to church and with each other during the week. Right. And so church is not an event. It's, a, it's life. Amen. <laughs> it, 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 it's living life together. To the glory and honor of God. These people, I, I notice in the in the lesson, bring out the fact that they were they were consecrated, consecrated to Him. They were consecrated believers, and, 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 and consecration is not only uh, uh, in, uh, individualistic um, um, experience. It's also corporate. Amen. And so though I believe that the Holy Spirit was able to, to, to empower this church because they had the foundation. They were living life together and no one had a need in the church, the Bible said. They fellowshiped with each other. They, 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 stood, they, they stayed close to the word of God. They, these people wait to the temple daily. Amen. And they fellowship with each other from house to house. Where do we see that in today's church? What I see today in today's church is people are living uh, uh, independent, individual lives. And that kind of lifestyle, I, I, I just... I just, um, based upon the, the word of God, don't see where the Holy Spirit can empower the church in the fullest extent when that foundation is not there. And so I think one of the greatest needs if our churches would, would love to be empowered by the Holy Spirit like how he empowered the church in the book of Acts it's simply to get back to basics. Amen. Get back to the basics of loving each other, living life with each other, praying together for the upward of the Holy Spirit, and then moving forward together. If the together is not there, the Holy Spirit is not there. Amen. 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 So he's saying it should be a style of life. Yes. Amen. Amen. We yes. should have a style of life with the brothers and sisters. That's yes. why small groups are very important. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit is going to be poured out again and again, like the book of Acts, because we as the Seventh-day Adventist Church will move forward in small groups, loving each other, 
coming together with each other and we will deliver this final message that the world needs. And, and this, because that is what Bible prophecy projects, that there is a remnant church that will deliver the final last day message. And when we come together, continuing to follow back to basics, like Pastor just says, through faith, through love, the Holy Spirit will move through us and it is coming. It is coming. It is coming. And I pray that everyone who is hearing this recording, all of us, especially us here sitting down, opening up the word of God, that we will open up our hearts and allow the Holy Spirit to empower us to go, to come together as a family and to allow that love and that faith to pour through us so that we can continue to do this work. As we, as we, as we go from just the Holy Spirit empowering the church. Now we want to talk about the Holy Spirit witnessing. And we're going to start with Acts 7 55. Acts 7 55. And what we're going to focus on here is how did the Holy Spirit minister to the witnessing disciples in each of the experience listed in these Bible verses? What were some of the various things the Holy Spirit did in these situations? So in Acts 7.55, it reads, But he, being filled of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So making a note, this is for Stephen. The Holy Spirit revealed a vision to Stephen of the glory of God and and. Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So we see the Holy Spirit, it reveals visions to us. Now we go to Acts 8.29. Acts 8.29. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. Okay, so the Holy Spirit speaks and spoke to Philip to give instructions that aligns with the will of God. Because then he was able to open up the, the scriptures to the, to the Ethiopian and break down what was that prophecy he was reading in Isaiah. So we see from first, the Holy Spirit reveals stuff to us. And this was such an important time in Acts 7.55 because then the gospel was being opened to the Gentiles. And then we see in Acts 8.29, the Holy Spirit is instructing Philip. Now let's go to Acts 11.15. Acts 11.15. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. So, so now we see that the Holy, Spirit is, the Holy Spirit is falling on them and it's empowering them. Then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John, indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So just like what Pastor said earlier, Pastor Sean, when we are, when we are witnessing it also we may not we may not know oh what word do i say what bible verse do i bring up from all of our studies from spending time with god from allowing ourselves to become a temple of the holy spirit and to let the holy spirit dwell inside of us when we need to give a word when we need to witness the holy spirit will bring those those scriptures to mind and now we read the holy spirit's varied ministry in the first century was truly amazing the experience above are just a sampling of his activity. He strengthened Stephen to witness for the Lord in the face of a rootless and out control mob stoning him to death. Okay. And then he miraculously guided Philip to an influential truth seeking Ethiopian to open up the content of the con the continent of Africa for the gospel. He gave Peter a conformity sign when the Gentile believers also received the gift of the Holy Spirit. He brought the church together in unity. So it goes right back to what pastor said, unity, unity. The Holy Spirit brings the church together. So whenever you see the church coming together, you know that's the power of the Holy Spirit. So true. So true. Um, yeah, I, li I like this statement on Jesus' lesson. The Holy Spirit was active in the New Testament church and is active in the, in the life of our church today. He longs to empower us, strengthen us, 
teach us, guide us, unify us, and send us out on the most important mission in the world, which is leading men and women to Jesus and the truth. Uh, you know, he's, he, he's making himself a burden to the individual and to the church. And that is, that is so awesome. So awesome. Amen. Amen. I, I remember, I remember, uh, 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 this is a true story, the, 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 the annual Rose Bowl uh, parade that takes place in California. Uh, uh, one year, um, one year they had a, a major crisis. Uh, as the floats were going by in the parade, uh, it seems like one of the one of the vehicles uh, uh, had some had some mechanical issues and, and, and stopped and, and backed up all the, the, the floats behind it. And when they investigated to find out um, what was the source of the problem, they found out that uh, the the Exxon the Exxon uh, float. Uh, the Chevron, sorry, the Chevron float. Um, uh, uh, you know, Chevron, Chevron, the major, uh, one of the major oil companies in our, in our world today. Their float actually was a source of the problem. It broke down and caused the backlog uh, 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 behind, behind um, you know, along the road, I should say. And when they investigated to find out what had happened to the actual truck that was that was pulling the float guess guess what was the source of the problem with the truck the truck had run out of gas now you're looking at chevron chevron the, the major oil company uh its float ran out of gas uh, 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 when you when you think about it, um, you, you you think about the church having this this vast reservoir of power, this vast source of fuel, uh, so to speak, uh, 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 and yet still, and yet still, uh, um, um, it, it, it seems as if uh, we are lacking that power. As if we have run out of fuel, and, and, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, uh, if, if, if we really do need to embrace how the Spirit of God works, and, and what he, what he says in the Word that he needs as a foundation to do his work, and so. Uh, uh, he's ready to do all these things that we just read uh, uh, with the church. Our, our, our one, our, our goal is to simply cooperate with them. Amen. Amen. Likewise, um, I love when it says at the end, he's still active working with us, right? And then um, they dare to give us a question. What can we do day by day to make ourselves more open, honorable for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, right? So um, this is an invitation for us, right, for the Holy Spirit in our lives. Um, it's not what, like John F. Kennedy said, what others are, what could others could do? Hey, hey what could I do? You know, the, the Holy Spirit, God works with us personally we're in the church we're the we're the church if we look for that holy spirit and we are united like you said pastor Harris, in the beginning god will give us that power he'll change our lives and like in the beginning it said there's a there's a verse that we didn't touch john 8 it doesn't come out in the lesson it's john 3 8 it says the wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is everyone who is born by the Spirit 
the same way the wind blows and we don't know where it comes from, but we see the effect, the power of the wind. Hey, the Holy Spirit wants to work in our lives like that. And we have to be ready. So when we hear the word of God, we could say, here I am. Here I am. I want to be, I want the Holy Spirit and I want to be, I want to be part of it. I want to work. I want to be that instrument. So day by day, what could we do? I remember um, this is like, we have to know how to hear the word of God. So when we're in our devotional and everyone that's listening to us, we will find that Holy Spirit. Not only when we're gathering church Sundays and Wednesdays, we will have when we have a special relation with God in the mornings and we take time for it, that Holy Spirit will talk to us and will prepare us in the day. So when we suddenly have a situation, we all just go through the prayers that we got last week and we'll say in our mind, God, could you work with us? Show me. And God will show you. I remember I'm from Puerto Rico. So really, this is the second time I gave a, a Sabbath lesson in English. So forgive me if I all my mistakes. But um, I was driving my car with my wife after coming out of church. And it was like 9.30 at night. And I saw this lady in a dark place with a baby, carrying the baby. And I told my wife, I feel that God's telling me to stop. In a dark place, in Puerto Rico, it could be an ambush. But I led it to the Holy Spirit. We stopped. She got in. I told her, where could I take you? Where you're going, and she was gonna walk 20 miles with her baby. We put her in the car, and we took her where she was gonna stay. A very, very humble place. She had fought with her husband, and her husband threw her out of the house. When we got there, she started crying because she didn't have money to give us. And I said, No, it doesn't work that way. I've been talking to you about God and the Holy Spirit. God's telling me, give you money. So we gave her money, and this is for bread and milk for the baby. And she came out of that car as a different person. We, what are we doing day by day to make a difference, showing the world that the Holy Spirit is still active, working with us today. That's the message that God wants to tell us. Yes, it's important what happened in the past, but today, right now, are we moving with the Spirit of God? Amen. Good stuff. Good stuff, Dr. Santos. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, thank you so much for that testimony, Dr. Santos, because you went right in to that last final question of that page that I was, I, the spirit was speaking to me saying, this is something that we need to cover. And you covered it perfectly. Thank you so much. As we go into the Holy Spirit in the word of God and witnessing, we see all throughout the word of Acts, especially in 2 Peter 1.21 and Hebrews 4.12. We see that God inspired the prophets through his Holy Spirit to share the inspired word of God. I'm going to read Hebrews 4.12 really quickly. Hebrews 4.12. And it, the word of God reads, For the word of God is living, and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of, of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So we see here that 
the word of God. It, that's what he actually is the transforming power. And it talks about this all throughout the book of Acts. Like when you, when we really look at the book of Acts, we see how much Acts is a foundation for our church and an example for our church. Because if, if you look at the book of Acts, we could just say that, that the book of Acts can be called the, the book of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the early church. And all throughout that, it's when it says in like Acts 4.4, 4, they heard the word, they believed. So it all comes from the word. It all comes from the foundation of that power that comes from the actual word of God. Okay, Acts 8.4, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. It all comes back to the word. Acts 4.31, the Holy Spirit empowers us to speak the word of God with boldness. Okay, Acts 13.18 it shows us the point of preaching is for the word to be glorified. And then, and then verse 49, the word of the Lord was being spread all throughout the, the world. Acts 17, 2, it shows us in the life of Paul. Paul reasoned with, with, uh, for the scriptures. He reasoned. Everything came right back to the word of God. And then Acts 18, 24, it highlighted a disciple that was mighty in the word. So it shows us being mighty in the word of God is a blessing because that's where our power comes from. So it's the Holy Spirit in working with the word because that's the job of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, it always points us right back to Jesus. That's what's so beautiful about the Holy Spirit. And now I want, we spoke about the witnessing, we spoke about the word, and I, now I would like to ask Pastor Harris if he could read Acts 16, 11 to 15. And here we're going to go to our last day as we come to a close, the life transforming power of the Holy Spirit, the life transforming. So we're going to be closing with Thursday here, the life transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 16, 11 to 15. Okay. Therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days, and on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside, where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who, were, who met there. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Tyatharia, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she had, and when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, "If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay." So she persuaded them. Amen. Amen. Pastor, what, like, just give an example from this first story and we'll jump to the other ones. What does this teach us about the power of God to change the lives of people from all different backgrounds? That God is interested in everyone. And he can use, he can use anyone who is, who is um, willing to humble themselves, to be used by him. Uh, here you have this, you have this, um, this lady who listened to God's word uh, and, and, and was changed by it, and she was she was filled with with the with the power of the Holy Spirit in such a way that. She wanted to make sure that her entire house also heard the same message. Amen. Um, and so um, uh, God is just, he's just there, uh, knocking at the door of each person's heart. 
and 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 it's not it's not you don't have to be a theologian. You, you, here you have a, 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 just a simple woman um, who was used mightily for God. Uh, all it begins with yes, uh, Dr. Santos mentioned. Uh, interacting with the word uh, and the, the lesson that you referred to um, uh, uh, Chris um, regarding the word remember the Holy Spirit inspired the word of God Amen. and so therefore if by, by consuming the word daily by, by interacting engaging with the word daily that's one way in which everybody you can even in our day and age, you can even listen to the word. You follow me? So there's no excuse for anyone to to lack a, 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 a good diet of the word. Day. It's just a matter of commitment. Are we willing? Are we committed to 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 be led and, and to be filled by the Holy Spirit? And this woman listened to the word of God through Paul and her life was changed and she went about changing others. And if we listen to the word of God too on a daily basis, he might do the same to us and through us. Amen. 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 Um, the, the Holy Spirit wants, uh, wants people to be saved and the Holy Spirit wants us to be saved. And for these last moments of the day, we have our special guest here and Dr. Santos, please share with us one of your favorite Bible verses and how has the Holy Spirit used that verse and the word through the word to make a transformation in your life? Well, one of my favorite verses, and, and I told you once, right, mm -hmm. was in Psalms mm -hmm. and is chapter 40, right? Mm -hmm. And it talks about it gives me an example of who I am um, and what happened in my life and how God really changed me and took me out of the, you know, um, call me. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it says, he waited plenty for, I waited for the Lord and he inclined to me his head and heard my cry, and he drew me up from the pit to the destruction out of uh, um, out of the mud and set my foot my feet in the rocks god changed my life with the holy spirit he took me in a life that i was a young person and didn't have a path and and he used my wife he used my wife and he empowered her so that she could bring to me the gospel, the word of God. And, and it came to a point, and this is where I go to everyone that's listening to us, that are listening. It comes a point in our lives where we have to decide who we're going to serve. It comes a point in our life if we're going to say, God, I want you to use me as an instrument. It comes a point in our life that we could be only a number I've always said that God always calls everyone, right? There's a group that call, God calls everyone in church. But then there's others that receive that call and they, and they become, and, and, and they switch their life with the Holy Spirit and they become faithful. And, and, and they turn all their house, their kids, Everything they got, they put it in the Lord's hand. God worked like that with me. And during the 20, 30 years, I know God. Uh, I have a relation with him. My kids are always working for the Lord. And let me tell you this. You're not hearing us. They didn't let this pandemic stop them. They do Zoom. They do Facebook Live. They sing because they understand that this is the proclaiming of the Lord's word and this is the power of the word through the internet. And my wife, 
that's not technology. And she would be ashamed that I say this today because she's humble. Since the pandemic in March through tomorrow that she already went to the store, she serves every Sabbath 25 plates of meal. Every single Sabbath. After we hear the word of God by, by the internet, by Facebook, she prepares all these foods, nine pounds of rice, lasagna. Not, you know, we do it better because it's for elders that are waiting for us at the door of their house. And we prepare all these foods and we take it out of our pocket. Because it's what God gives us. Everything we had is what God gives us. And we put it in my car. And we go to the houses and we give it to elders that are alone. That don't have people that take care of them. And every Sabbath during March to tomorrow, God has given us power and has covered us with the Holy Spirit to not be infected it so that we could be instruments amen instruments in a world that's dying but is receiving the light of god that holy spirit that in genesis said that was around the earth and that word of god that in john said that the word became flesh and we saw the glory the glory of god I could say that my favorite verse engages with what God has wanted to do in my life and in my siblings and everyone that's around me. So God bless you and thank you for this invitation. Amen. And Pastor Harris, as we come to um, a close, you know, we're, we're doing this live through Facebook, and there's people that all around the world who have access to this. Uh, by the grace of God, we have had the last study go out to many different um, platforms, and it has been a blessing. So, Pastor Harris, I would like for you to share. I know you have been very um, engaged in ministry when it comes to the little companies at Mansfield Church. And you've been preaching little companies and sharing it from a biblical perspective of how the Holy Spirit impressed on your heart that we need to do the example that we found in Acts. But for those who have not, who are not familiar with the little companies program, just briefly, and I know I, I, I don't want to put too much pressure on you, but briefly give everybody who's listening the uh, a testimony of the little companies and how they could implement that in their ministries. Um, you used the right word there. It's biblical. Um, um, the church was always public and private. You had the public ministry where people would go to the temple in the Old Testament, but then they were also they would also gather in groups outside of the temple. The same thing you had in the in the Old Test in the New Testament, where the people would go to the synagogues, or they would meet on the trees. But they would go from house to house. They'll go to their own house, uh, and they, they they would meet together in homes. Uh, you had Jesus. His life is a testament. He went to the synagogue as his customs was every Sabbath group four verse 16, but yet still he lived life with 12. How can we feel like we can choose to do otherwise and still have the Holy Spirit power to do witnessing uh, uh, like what transpired in the book of Acts? We got to follow his method. And his method includes church that is private and church that is public. Today, church is mostly public. We need to implement the private part of church where if the church is too big, 
It needs to be broken up into smaller groups where people can live life together. And so I believe that's what the Holy Spirit, uh, that's his method to work through. He works through the individuals uh, in, in, in making them holy, in sanctifying them personally. But he also works with us corporately. And I believe the latter rain will fall in a, in a major way when that foundation is being laid. That's the foundation we're laying at Mansfield. And, and that's the foundation that the Texas Conference is now moving towards. And we'd love to see that happen and replicate it all over this world so that the Holy Spirit can fall uh, in the latter in fashion and that Jesus can come. Amen. We are ready for Jesus to come back, y'all. Amen. We're ready to go home. This is not our home. Amen. This is not our final home, folks. And so um, uh, 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 we're ready for the land where, there, where there's no more COVID. We're ready for the land where there's no sickness. We're ready for the land where there's no death. We're ready, ready for the land where there's no racism. We're ready for the, we're ready for the land where, where, where there's no poverty. Uh, we're ready. And so uh, let, let, let's get ready. And let's build a structure for the Holy Spirit to work. Amen. Amen. So as we close with prayer, I'm going to ask Pastor, I'm going to ask Dr. Santos if you could say the first prayer. And I'm going to ask Pastor if you could close us with a, a nice prayer. So thank you so much. Sure thing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful time that your Holy Spirit has called us and has prepared us so that we could talk to everyone that has been able to listen to this review of the lesson. And that we could, and I thank you, God, that we could be together and that your Holy Spirit could keep us as one so that we could keep preaching the word of God to all the places and to everyone that really is ready and has received this call so that they could go to heaven likewise. Stay with us, God, during this day. Stay with us, God, with our siblings and, and our loved ones. And protect us with your spirit so that no one here could be affected by this pandemic and that we could take advantage of this technology so that we could keep preaching your word so that everyone could come to Jesus and could get ready for a second coming. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, it brings enlightenment, it brings encouragement. Uh, but most of all, it, 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 it draws us closer to you. Uh, we thank you for the amazing gift of salvation that you have blessed humanity with. Um, you have you've given us your only begotten Son. Jesus Christ, as our sacrifice for sin, uh, as Father, you've given him to this, this world so that we can have access to the amazing power of the Godhead uh, through the Holy Spirit. And you've given him to us, Father, so, I, so we can also, by faith, uh, I've have confidence in, in, in the life, Father, to come. All of this is good news. It is good news knowing that we are forgiven. We have no shame and guilt of the past. It's, it's good news to know that, that, that we have power to overcome sin and we have eternal life in our grasp. All of this, Father, is given by you, and, and we're so thankful for it. And, and, and you have filled us now with this joy to share this good news with others.
Amen. Amen. So uh, thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Santos, again for being a part of this. Pastor Harris, uh, thank you again. And for everybody who is watching, please continue to join us Saturdays at 4 p.m. for the after study. You can see it through our Mansfield Adventist official website, mansfieldadventist.com, where we will be streaming live. And you also can join us through Facebook. God bless you all. And I pray that Jesus will bring you safely through another week. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Look up, look up When you've done all you can And all that's left to do is stand Look up, look up When it's time to face the unknown I am right by your side, you won't ever have to stand alone. Don't be dismayed, just look up, look up. When a heaven seems so far away, the unrighteous for every day just look up look up this world isn't all that there is I'm preparing a place where all who love me
And I've been with you all along This race that you're running Is not given to the strong 